to use the numerical method, we first of all have to work out what the equations are relating the position of velocity at some time t naught to the position of velocity at some time shortly afterwards t1, where t1 equals t naught plus our time step delta t, where delta t is small, in this case maybe 0.1 of a second or 0.01 of a second or something like that. So what we'll do is we'll assume that at start, at time naught, we know the position x naught and the velocity v naught. The question then is, what are the new positions and velocity at the end of this time step? We want a fairly simple equation for that. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate because a time step is pretty short. It just has to be accurate enough for a short time step. And then what we'll do is we'll get the computer to go through and move step by step by step by step through forwards. So, starting off at t0, and we know x0 and v0, the first thing to do is to calculate the acceleration. Now we've got our falling person. We've got a force mg downwards and a drag force of one half c rho a v squared up. So the net force, the net upward force, is going to be half c rho a v squared minus mg. That's equal to mass times acceleration, f equals ma, back from Newton's laws. So that tells us that the acceleration is equal to 1 over 2 m c rho a v squared minus g. Now if we put in for the velocity, the velocity at the start of our time step, that gives us acceleration at the start of our time step. And the assumption we're going to make is that the acceleration doesn't change significantly during that time step, which is pretty plausible if the time step is very small. OK, so we know the starting position, the starting velocity, and we're going to assume it accelerates at that rate all the way through this time step. So now we need the new position. So x1 is going to be the starting position plus the change in position, delta x. And what's delta x? Well, this is motion under constant acceleration. We've done this before. We use the equation s equals ut plus half a t squared. So the position change of position is going to be the velocity v0 times the time delta t plus half a0 which we just worked out delta t squared okay how about the velocity the velocity at the end is going to be the velocity of the start plus the change in velocity delta v and delta v the change in velocity is just going to be the acceleration times the time. That's the definition of acceleration. If you remember, acceleration is how much the velocity changes per unit time. So just multiply it by the unit time, and you've got the change in velocity. So that's all we have to do. We've got three equations. T1 equals T0 plus delta T. We need to pick a delta T, one that's going to be short enough to give us an accurate answer. We'll come back a bit later to how you do that in a sensible way. And you've got the start of your time step, the, the uh, position and velocity. And then you can calculate, calculate the acceleration, feed that into these two equations, and then you get the position, time and velocity at the end of the time step. And then repeat. You've now got a new position and velocity, which means you calculate a new acceleration. And using the new acceleration, you can go to t2, x2, v2, and then t3, x3, v3, and so on, step by step, and calculate what's going on. So now let's show you how to do that.